Hurricane Sandy, the drought and heat wave of 2012, snowmageddon, flooding in the heartland, all extreme events, all billion dollar disasters, and all of them disrupted electricity and jeopardized lives. Why? Because extreme weather events are primarily centered on water. Too much or too little disrupts transportation. Turns out that almost every single power station where you generate electricity is uh, controlled in part by water. You have to put water in to cool things off, and as a consequence, when you can't draw water in, you have to shut down the power station. And reduced power often leads to blackouts and brownouts, a dangerous situation if it happens in the middle of summer or the dead of winter. So if the weather is more extreme, more violent, what can be done? Get ahead of it, says the Department of Energy. Electric companies should strengthen their grids and build backup systems. Conservation and water recycling is also critical. In some cases, we're going to be managing that water better through more reservoir storage, the use of pump storage, the use of newer technologies that allow you to operate with uh, more efficiencies. And pre-position supplies ahead of storms like Hurricane Sandy. People couldn't get gasoline. Gas was available, electricity wasn't. So if you had pre-positioned generators, you could actually, in fact, very quickly restore power, moving things along much more quickly than we've seen in the consequences of these storms. And then there's money. Firming up America's energy structure could take billions of dollars, but rebuilding after a disaster could take hundreds of billions. Is the cost on the front end worth it? Pershing says yes. It means preparing ourselves, because these damages are to a certain extent, say, they're baked into the economy, baked into the environment. And we're going to have more storms, and they're going to be more severe, and we're going to have to prepare ourselves for those damages. I'm meteorologist Jen Carfagno.